So here is a testimonial. I was just having a little difficulty pulling it up, so bear with me. If I can't pull it up, we'll pass it. But um, here is a testimonial from a uh, teacher who attended. And bear with me as I quickly get to it. I can't get it large. multi-layered situation um, in our middle school we have four elementary schools that are funneling in for the first time so for us it's really the first time that these students have come together as a class and they're going to be together as a class for six years so there's that whole piece um, for, for me I just love seeing the kids with their hands on um, learning and being out and building and constructing and um, putting it all into action. I think one of the most important things um, that I just love to see is the independence that these kids um, come back with. We are encouraging them to set goals for themselves for the week and making good um, healthy choices in the dining hall and I go through a packing list with them and encourage them to pack for themselves. So even though um, it really hits the curriculum, it, it, I think it really goes beyond that to them becoming young people and just kind of breaking away from their parents a little bit and realizing that I can do this. You know, I've written down quotes from years past and one that has come up over the years that kids write in their journal is just, I really can do this and I can climb mountains and I can be successful. And they're, sometimes I think they surprise themselves on what they can do. Just given the independence. So overall, um, very multi-layered to what these kids get out of this program. Um, yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. What about teachers? What do you guys like about it? Oh, firstly, just like coming out, is there anything that just like, wow. Love it. Well, we love it, I think, for us, is we get to see each other um, as adults in a really relaxed situation. And we do a variety of things. Uh, we go with the kids to classes, which is really fun to be able to um, work with the kids outside of the classroom. And, and the nature's classroom teachers are teaching, so we get to interact with the kids you know, during the lesson, which is fun. And just for us to be able to have some downtime together, which we don't normally get. You know, we do some planning, but we do some hiking. And I think it's important to have good bonds with people that you teach and work with, and it, it strengthens our relationship. So for me, I would never, ever switch out of teaching sixth grade because of the trip to nature's classroom. It is definitely the high point, and I get kids that come back as seniors and say, one thing I will always remember is my trip to nature's classroom. That obviously is a fairly typical photo of what you might see the kids working on. I think that's called helium hula hoop. Um, and then finally, I took this quote directly off the website. After spending a week at Nature's Classroom, living and learning together, students develop a sense of community, a confidence in themselves, and an appreciation for others that carries over to the school community. And I just, I obviously chose that quote because that's the why the four of us are, five of us, Carol Dilley isn't here, but the five of us are really hoping that this goes through. So any questions, we'll do our best. There is a parent information night that's going to be held here on April 9th. We'll have more information from that. But. And then they also, the, the coordinator of the Ocean Park campus comes and does an information session during the day for the students themselves to um, give them more specific information about what to expect, what to pack, and so and I can just say I have taken a group of students to Nature's Classroom and it's fantastic. And the opportunities that they get outside of the classroom and just to bring our fifth graders from Bethel and South Burlington to a neutral space where they can just get to know each other, I think is so important. Um, and I just, I don't know, I can't just say enough about how awesome this program is. A lot of the things we can talk about getting kids outside, uh, environmental education, experiential education, those kinds of things are all what this is about. Really. Uh, have any of you been to the ocean park? Uh, one? My, my son went there to um, this program, this five day program, a year ago. Um, 
so in the SU in which I live, the sending schools to the middle school get together and um, go to and do this program, and they just had a phenomenal time last spring. Um, and getting the exposure of studying um, habitats related to salt water mm -hmm. on the ocean, something that they don't have on a regular basis here. Um, so that's sort of when I went looking and calling Nature's Classroom, like, what availability do you have? I did ask in particular just to be able to get to do something new and different for the kids. Do and you our guys take a lot of pictures? We will. We yes. will. And we will send them. <laughs> have, have any of you ever gone to an overnight five day week camp? No? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, that's the experience that they'll walk away with, you know, and, you, and it's a quality program really regionally renowned if not more than that so it's a really extravagant experience i can't believe we get this opportunity yeah, yeah. so uh, this is teachers and students no now parents do not go with this they're not chaperone this right. correct okay. how many students is the total of the we figured there would be 33 30, 30, 30. right is that how many students there are in the, two, in the fifth grade the two yes. okay and how many uh, teachers will go. So there's well, there's three at a time. Three at a time. So <laughs> we're, we're gonna swapping. We're gonna split a couple of days. Mm -hmm. A couple so of days. Because Bethel has sixth grade, so they're not gonna be with us, and we and Seth Rosen have fourth grade, so we're just gonna keep two with our kids. Okay. So at all times, there'll be three adults from the school. Yes. Right. Yes. If they fifth grade didn't want to go because the parents are whatever. Right. They could just stay here. With they would just go to they, school with, yeah. Yeah, with the class that stayed on. Right. Do the kids know about this yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They, They've already gotten this letter because I've had several parents who, who asked me about it because it wasn't on their radar. Yeah. Um, I have to say a couple of them, I seem felt more concerned for the parent than the child, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did, and I guess I understand why a little bit. Um, but there will be some informational meetings in April. What is the cost per child? Is that how they do it, or is it a program? That it is a cost per child. So um, we are paying $294 per child. $294 each for five days? Mm -hmm. Now that includes that's total. total. Yeah, that's wow. everything. That's everything plus transportation. Then the the yeah, bus. paying the bus is separate. Separate right. plus bus. Does the bus have to stay there to take you places while you're there? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Is would our school be the only school there? No, the week that were that both um, South Royalton and Bethel were able to go, there's one other school group at the Ocean Park facility at the same time. Same age level? Uh, that's my impression. I, I, just I don't remember what age. Do you, yeah. So you don't know what that other where that other school is from at this point. I didn't write it down. They okay. told me, and I, I I didn't write it down. It's not. It wasn't anybody like a place that I heard of. Personally. And if I remember correctly, just as far as programming goes, the programming will be focused for our kids. So. Like, we will talk to them and say, there's, there's lists of all these activities, and we say, oh, we want our kids to do this, and we want our kids to do that, or we're studying this, so this would be a great add-on. And so, um, as far as the Bethel and Royalton kids, they'll be mixed. Um, but, sir, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not, but the, not that other school will the have their school. own kind of agenda of what they're doing, so, as far as you know, I'm aware. And will it be, is, uh, do families have to contribute any money to this? No. no. So is there a whole cost coming out of the Royalton, that Royalton money? This will be the anonymous fund in Royalton, and I believe it's coming out of the budget in Bethel. Yes. So uh, I have another question for administration. I think it's great that you're getting fifth graders together, but is there, in the ninth grade, for some ninth graders, is there any plans to get all of the kids like the eighth, I mean, eighth to ninth grade is going to be huge, you know, and I, and I think this is great, but I also think that you can't just pick some kids to try to, you know, 
This was an opportunity. It wasn't a choice for them. This was an opportunity that came up. So one of the things that Bruce has said, the steering committee has said, any opportunities where we can get together at any grade level, any adults, hot locks. So this was an opportunity. We're, we're planning on more connections with different groups of kids. I would rather, I'll speak, I would rather not have to do it out of my field trip budget, but you know, yes. <laughs> so if there, wait, we wait, could wait, budget wait. for this yeah. in the yeah. future, because so I know that we budget for Washington. Right, right, right. So that would be the goal. There's, there's an idea with, like, think of DC, think of this, that there's touchstones in, in the years you're here, that there's milestone trips. Like, uh, next week or two weeks from now, Bethel Music's going to New York City to see Wicked. That's the sort of thing that you would build in to, that both campuses take advantage of. That's a great opportunity for us to go with you. <laughs> we bet the people that come with us. <laughs> I won't go, I promise. <laughs> It was, a, it was a long list of volunteers for Shackleton. Uh, so so I don't know whether you want to vote on it, just give us a thumbs up. But, you know, this is a little unusual kind of field trip. It's, you know, several nights and out of state. Out of state. And uh, we just we just okay. wanted you to be... Basically, the funding is taken care of. And basically, the only reason we need to give us an approval is so that our insurance works. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, that's probably good. If we approve it, then, we, then our insurance will cover the children and whatever. So I think we should have a vote. Is it, I'm not sure that that's what I heard. Though. Let's clarify. I thought it just said that the Bethel uh, kids would be paid out of the anonymous money, and that the Bethel kids, because it's this year, would be paid out of the Bethel budget. That's what I heard. I asked the moment if he could find the money in the Bethel budget to, to do this, and he said yes. Fund is something that we left to Royalton a couple of years ago, and there's money there for this program. Is this over April? No. No, school's in session. It's a couple of weeks after we get back from April. So parents have already received this. Have you had anybody where you're thinking one or two would be staying behind? We're, we're absolutely not going to go, or? We know how to handle it. We've had people stay back from trips and we designed a program in a next level classroom. Yeah, I guess I was work. just asking what the reaction to the letter was. I haven't heard, I haven't personally heard anybody say okay. definitively. So maybe that's a we're not going, But it, I mean, the families have to make their own cases. I mean, I think the parents, <laughs> parents, I have had a couple parents talk to me that they're a little nervous about their child um, being gone sure. for five days. Um, and you know, I, I just, um, yeah, I, yeah, but, but nobody said that they're not going to go. They're not gonna go. They, yeah. Part of it's yeah. like, I think they just kind of want to talk through that process <coughs> with me. Like, I'm really nervous about this. I think it's a good opportunity, but, and so we're kind of in that processing stage. And I think ultimately parents will make the decision that they feel is best. I hope they all go, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and I think yeah. that, I mean, the nature's classroom, it's been around for years. I mean, they deal with homesickness. They deal, you know, those kinds of things. You know, we, um, you know, we're, we're here for, hopefully there won't be any emergencies. But have you picked what you want for? Not yet. We haven't yet. <laughs> and it's about what, three hours away, four? It's three. It's Portland from here. So about three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. I know that um, when Ms. Haynes was here for fifth and sixth grade, she would always take her students for a, what, three or four day trip to Holbrook. Holbrook. To Hol yeah, and you know, my son, they absolutely loved that, just to get away and do ropes court, you know, do a lot of um, activities that got them more into the nature and like bonding with each other. And But they were, I don't know, 
it seemed like all the students went, but it was so it was definitely that's a memorable age. Yeah. Yes. Well, and that's the thing. I think this is such that this age is so important, and I, I feel like this is that part where they're 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 wanting their independence, but they don't quite know. It's it's just it's such a cool age. So it's kind of like this is this is risky for them. Like, okay, I'm leaving my family, but oh wait, I'm I'm responsible, and it's just. That's what I love about this age, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a time that's so important to have these opportunities for. We've had a meeting in the five, six, or fifth grade, we've had a meeting here with two parents who were concerned, they um, expressed their concerns. We talked to them the best we could, and I think they, you know, I think it's similar to what we said. It's that they just need to have the information, they need to talk about it, and they need to go in my, I would, I would try very hard to get everybody there. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to support them. Discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There you go. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Alicia, you got to show these siblings too, right? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to keep it going. classroom efforts on the back 40 here at the Bethel School where we're fortunate enough to have a, a pretty decent uh, little forest resource that's part of the school property. Um, I have a master's degree in land use planning um, focusing on natural resource planning from Virginia Tech and a BS in natural resource studies from the University of Massachusetts. After getting those degrees I started on a now a career that I'm retired from 28 years with the federal government in law enforcement with the National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, and a stint with the FBI, which we won't talk about today. Um, so after I retired, I always kept my hand in the planning arena uh, with the agencies I, I worked for, namely the Park Service and the Forest Service. But I wanted to become uh, you know, more active and, and well-versed in that field again. So um, our kids both go to school here, and we had spent some time on the forest out back. and in talking to the administrators here, we came up with the idea of doing a, a forest plan, looking at some of the issues and opportunities on this small forest. So um, I need to give a, a quick photo credit. This was taken by a fellow by the name of Owen Bradley, this picture just the other day. This is um, in the after school program where we're utilizing some of the existing trails back there and doing it, what's supposed to be a hiking and running program, but it's started out as snowshoeing, obviously. Um, so this picture just was the other day, and it was a perfect, perfect picture to put in for the beginning of this program. This is essentially the entrance or the portal to the Bethel School Forest. So um, very quickly, the process that I use, it, it, there's all kinds of names for it. I call it land analysis and evaluation. It's simply a review of existing conditions and resources focused on what you want to look at and based on what you want to do. Obviously, you could do a 2,000-page plan and look at every type of bacteria in the forest, but we pared it down to what we thought was essential for what we want to do. Um, and this process just sort of automatically reveals a lot of the issues and opportunities. Um, and it forms the basis for the plan. So out of that, we have about a 16 or 17 page plan that has uh, a bunch of action items in it and a whole bunch of maps showing things. The tools that I used, uh, the state of Vermont, many people are probably familiar with, the Agency of Natural Resources has a natural resource atlas that's based on a GIS, a Geographic Information Systems platform, an ArcGIS platform. It is very good. It has a lot of this work essentially done for you if you know where your property is. Once you found your property boundaries, you can do a quick map of the slope, for instance. Uh, you can do the topography lines. You can do 
um, waterways, these sorts of things. So the state, compared to other states, has, has gone a long way toward uh, doing a lot of the work that needs to be done when you do this process. So I supplemented that with a, a couple of apps, one called GPS Kit and one called GIS Kit Pro. Um, and what that enables you to do is to do field data collection and then, thanks again to the Vermont A&R website, merge all the data, data that uh, we collected out here into their site and make maps that show combinations of what they already have and what we want to look at. Um, and, and one of the benefits of a geographic information system, I'll, I'll demonstrate it here in a second with a really uh, complicated, busy map that I, I'm going to show, but essentially what it does, it allows you to turn off all these different data layers um, or combine them in any combination. So it's a, a really useful tool for, for this sort of a project. Um, so the first thing we had to do was figure out where our property was. So the very first step, uh -oh. that's not good. All right, for some reason the link is not working. Um, So can you hit enable editing at the top? Because I think you're projected view. See right here. Right. I think. Oh, okay. Hit that. Wait. Yeah. And then running it. That's probably gonna do it. All right. Let me just start the slideshow again. that most of the boundaries, with the exception of the GW Plastics boundary, had been previously surveyed uh, by licensed Vermont surveyors <coughs> and marked, and we were able to recover almost all of those property boundaries. Um, so uh, once we did that, uh, you know, we knew where our land was, thank you, and uh, we began documenting some of the other resources that are out there, for instance, the forest resources. I'm gonna go ahead while we're trying to solve the technical problem, just use a plan for a reference here. So oh, no, we might be back. sorts of, of things that you uh, can do on the land. It, it's one of those 
those uh, major limiting factors. We have talked to some folks who wanted a you know a high amount of logging to happen on the land for a variety of reasons, and you know that really is a, a constraint that would limit that. In addition to some of the educational things that we're trying to do, um, another limiting factor: the tan area that is uh, mapped by the state again as a deer wintering area. You can see almost the entire, if not the entire, uh, forested portion of the. Bethel School property is within the deer wintering area. So our management actions, what we want to do is protect that. In, in some cases, I think we can enhance that uh, with some of the proposed limited uh, timber activities that we're going to talk about. Wetlands and waterways is pretty important. There's no major, what I would call major wetlands on this property, but there's all kinds of feeder streams and the light blue dots are essentially water sources where springs come up out of the ground and as you can see there's at least a half dozen um, of these streams most of which do flow all year round even though some of them are very small and they flow into uh, two different drainage swales which are engineered so prior to the school being here this was farm property um, and prior to that just forested property so at some point to maintain uh, the dry areas where both the trailer park is next door and the school, they put in these drainage swales, but all these small streams feed those, but um, they still, you know, function as wetlands to an extent, and certainly the streams do. Um, up at the, the very, kind of the bottom left, uh, the letters are in black so they're hard to read, but there's a, a very significant spring head that was dug out and developed as a gigantic cast iron uh, bowl up there, uh, pretty neat. I saw a picture of this property just the other day in 1913 and almost the whole thing was cleared. It was all pasture, so it was probably a pasture water source or a farm water source for the farm where GW Plastics now is that owned most of this land. Uh, the darker blue along the yellow dotted trail, those are all stream crossings, most of which need attention. There's culverts that have been placed there that are, are various states of of failure or waters bypassing them. <laughs> Under timber management, we talked about all kinds of things. One of the ideas that the site seemed to, uh, to uh, be suitable for is the development of a small sugar bush at a high elevation and then also potentially capturing some uh, maple trees along a pipeline, you know, a tubing system that would come down to, uh, if you drive behind the school, you make the sharp left turn kind of straight ahead. We identified as a potential site for a school sugar house for kids to um, be involved in, in running and in the development of the entire system and layout of the system. Uh, also, we identified all of, there's a whole series of significant uh, sugar maple, fir and crab apple trees on the developed portion of the school grounds. Um, some of the sugar maples probably 30 years ago could have used some pruning that would have prevented some of the problems that are happening with them now, but there's still some opportunities for that. But more importantly, the crab apple trees, which are a lot of them are outside this window, are in bad need of repair to prevent uh, catastrophic failure of those trees. And they've been there for several decades now. And they're, uh, kind of an important resource for the for the schools. So we've identified that in the plan as a action item. Uh, also in here, what we talk, if you if you look at the purple outlines, basically at the entrance of the school forest, and then way up in the back, those are the only two areas. Uh, when we work, while I worked on this, I worked with a retired U.S. Forest Service forester, Tom Ketchum and we identified those two areas for potential timber management units, which the one at the very beginning, the gateway to the, the school forest would just essentially be a thinning um, type of a, a treatment where it would increase the, the age classes. There's a lot of very old trees there, but some of the trees we checked when we were doing programs with the kids are sapling size or a little bigger and they're 40 years
years old, so there's very little light coming to the forest floor. So we thought that we could really improve the, the essentially the gateway to the forest, make it look very pretty and have a diversity of tree species there, and then also release some of the maple trees potentially for that program. Um, the one that's up at higher elevation is primarily hardwood, and again, it would be a similar type thing, just some, some thinning of, of the trees that were there. Uh, leaning toward the maple species by keeping a full diversity of the tree species there. And then there was a small area of about two acres that had some significant uh, sugar maple trees, but a whole bunch of even age hemlock trees that the forester thought it would make sense to remove and allow that hardwood to come up to kind of expand that sugar bush. And one of the benefits of that, we talked a little bit ago about improving the quality of the deer wintering area. There's all kinds of shelter for deer up there and they use it but there's very limited food. So by having along the edges some opportunities for new growth, essentially the buds that the deer are gonna eat during the winter, um, you know, we felt that that would enhance that, um, that part of the property. <coughs> this is just a map of the uh, outdoor classroom sites. Uh, the green dots are sites that are either used or in some cases that the, the eco teacher has identified as potential future sites and they use the sites heavily and they're used you know every week on a uh, almost regardless of weather unless it's real windy or there's some kind of a danger factor also on this map there is an existing uh, challenge course cable course and high line course that's out there so it, we would recommend that that be continued, but it does need some significant maintenance. So that's a decision that still needs to be made, but um, you know, that's also a sort of an outdoor classroom and a you know, potentially uh, important resource, but uh, you know, the decision will have to be made. How much is it gonna cost to fix it? And can we get it back into the regular circulation? And if so, you know, we need to kind of plan for the future for you know, the trees that are gonna be needed to replace that as the other trees get older that things are anchored onto. Now this is the trail system map. Uh, the trails are in yellow and this is a combination of existing trails and skid roads. The existing trail behind the school goes up here we proposed what I call an inner loop trail. Now we're gonna have the kids, as we move forward with this, come up with better names for them, but right now that's the functional name, the inner loop trail. But that's actually the one we snowshoed and hiked the other day with the after school program, and it, it went very well. So that trail is gonna need a little bit of, of uh, build out, but essentially the trail corridor is already there. The trail now it continues up here. There's a small loop that goes on to Ryan Bidlack's property in meeting with him, he was very receptive to what we were doing, so we would probably pursue a trail use agreement with him. We've also mapped an alternative route that switched back, backs up and stays on the school property. One of the most exciting things that came out of this in meeting with all the neighboring landowners, Dennis Wood, who owns the land up behind, was immediately receptive and before we could even suggest it, said, I expect that you know the skid roads of my land will be part of a trail system that can be used by the public. So what we've done is mapped a trail that we call the outer loop that starts at that bridge and goes across his skid roads. At one point it becomes very steep, so with his permission for this corridor, we've mapped a route that avoids that steep portion, goes back onto a skid road, and then connects back onto town property and heads down to the recreation center property. So essentially it's linking two different pieces of, of uh, public land and another recent development as of last week is the Ketchums have agreed to a trail use agreement so we could actually make a complete loop trail without people having to go out onto the sidewalk in front of GW Plastics and the parking lots and everything so we'd be able to actually connect back to the school property so that was on, on the parts of both of those landowners uh, very generous and, and a, a real big benefit to this plan. There's also a mid-loop trail that goes by the existing water uh, facility that's up there and it follows a, a pretty neat old terraced road that was probably built for sugaring or logging. Uh, that road eventually peters out so we've flagged a trail alignment that connects with that outer loop trail. And then uh, the last but not least significant thing with the, the trail uh, 
program is that the Rochester Randolph Area Sports Trail Alliance is interested in pursuing grant money to make some of these trails mountain bike accessible. So what we've done is to avoid the potential for conflicts, especially on the downhill side, um, along what we identified as a suitable skid trail for that small timber cut. Um, it also would make a very good corridor for a bike trail. So that would cross the outer loop trail and then follow the ridge back down and, and make a complete loop. So um, the trail system to me is probably one of the most exciting things about the whole project.
again, yeah, again, we're very fortunate. We have this resource right next to one of the school properties, which is which is great. Well, there it is back there. Yeah. Any questions? Um, yeah, I'm yes. wondering if there's a, 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 I mean, uh, this is wonderful. Thank you for all that you've done. Yep. It's just um, fantastic, and it seems so many great opportunities to get kids outside and to really look at our forest lands and see what's out there so my question is is there a budget to go along with this are there estimates are, have you broken it down or are you planning on breaking it down to show what costs might be involved and um, i know that there's certain things that might actually generate a little bit of revenue to kind of absorb some of those costs but have you yeah. been putting numbers together yeah to a limited extent essentially we're trying to do as much as possible obviously labor, volunteer labor, um, and I think we can do a lot of it with that, you know, with the different school programs that are out there. But for instance, the, the there's not a lot of high value timber on this land, but any limited timber cuts we do, we thought about doing a, a stewardship type arrangement where the logger, in exchange for the value of the timber, for instance, builds the bridges across, you know, where the culverts need to be replaced by bridges. Um, and does some some of the trail work. So, uh, you know, we're looking for all kinds of creative opportunities, and, and I'm pretty invested in this now, and I'm essentially going to stay on it, you know, and volunteer my time uh, into the future to, to keep things moving in the, in the right direction. But there will be certain things that are going to require outside professional expertise that will probably have a cost what? If, if some sort of absorbing the cost isn't going to What's an example that you're thinking of? Oh, it sounded like you'd have uh, a forester working with the kids to. He's going to volunteer. He's volunteer. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. I guess it's just the bridge building and right. eliminating all those deadfall trees and you know uh, equipment you know, rental stuff like course. that. Well, the yeah, the ropes course, course the amendment. Cost yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. But again, it's amazing when you get going in the community. I mean, just by going to a surrounding way. But one thing that I think is good as far as, I mean, just back to the numbers is even if there is <coughs> volunteer time and contributions, to capture all that as value sure. is so important so that the community can really see yeah. what we're putting into it and if that had a, if we had to hire it out, what is that monetary value, you know, just, just valuing sure. the, yeah, yeah the in-kind contributions that are coming in, your time is, you know, everything. Is, is bad. <laughs> we're paying them. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, we're I'm not charging anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Christine? Uh, I was just curious what, what age range when you talk about students, is middle and through high school? Or? Well, I think there's opportunities for all the age ranges. For instance, we designed the trails, like the inner loop trails, designed specifically for the youngest of the kids to access their outdoor classroom that they use all the time. Um, to a, a different route, a little more interesting route. We kind of field tested the other day and they did great. Uh, but obviously we're not gonna have, you know, the kindergarten kids out there building a trail. I mean, maybe, maybe there is an opportunity to help with that. But, you know, it's gonna be kind of a common sense thing. So the older kids <coughs> would be the ones that would be utilized in like the, the technical career center kids with the trail building. We've had preliminary talks with them already and they are interested in, in doing some of that work. Yes. I, I was just wondering what the distance of the outer loop trail is. It's about a mile and a half. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, this is awesome. Um, and my other question is, I heard you talking about uh, the Randolph, the Alliance, the using it, will it be open to the public? Will all the trails be oh, open yes, to the public? Yeah, yeah. yeah, one of the conditions of the grant that Roscoe wants to pursue is a security easement. Mr. Wood has already uh, tenor we agree to allow the easement for that mid-loop trail. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it would be, everything would be open to the public for as long as those landowners were in place and allowed it. Shannon? Um, and this might be <coughs> more for Bruce. Uh, just a quick question. I heard you mention the mountain biking, which sounds great, but also I, I know how my kids attack that. Do we have any insurance concerns okay. about mountain biking? Well, we're kids on unsupervised. We're covered. Okay. I mean, uh, we're covered as as a part of. If a kid fell down in the hallway, I mean, uh, there, there's our insurance carrier covers kids on the property, and 
those things. You could probably never be, have enough, but uh, you know, we, it's it's just a normal uh, when kids are in school kind of policy, and uh, this is this would be school. If they're out there. <laughs> Well, that's that's a different story if they're not our kids. Uh, we already allow people to use our gym or, or people to use our playground. Mm -hmm. Probably just generally with with open lands in Vermont and New Hampshire, if you're not charging a fee, you know, and isn't posted, liability is very limited. It's almost impossible to find a successful lawsuit where somebody got hurt recreating. Uh, also, another. Another thing that goes to that point is if this trail grant were to, to occur and be funded, there would be a professional trail designer that would be involved in the design of that trail, somebody that they've used and has built trails most recently on U.S. Forest Service land behind the Rochester Ranger Station. So it wouldn't be kind of just a willy-nilly, let's have really steep yeah, trails. Really to, to, um, the, grant, the grant, I think, what they were pursuing was like a $50,000 grant for design and construction. They use a specialized narrow excavator that has very low impact. It's, I think it can go through a standard doorway. That's how narrow it is. It's kind of a neat thing. Whoa. Um, it's pretty well, high tech. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, even at Suicide Six, they're gonna be they're building mountain bike trails and they, they've uh, hired in some pretty, I don't know, reputable consultants to design it. There's a lot to it. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I like it. I like the idea of it. I think it's great. And it has a lot more recreational value than it does timber value. Yeah. It's not woodlot. It's not economically to do any logging on it. Um, so no, I like, I like the whole thing. Okay, any more questions for the <coughs> fours? Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. More sweet, more yeah, very short and sweet. More outdoor fun. We are proposing a joint field trip between a ninth grade science community, uh, between both schools to Franconio Notch overnight, June first and second. The cost is one hundred dollars plus the bus. One hundred dollars each. Or one hundred dollars for the campsite. Okay. And there's a, a dormant volcano there. They're be studying geology, lots of biology. Uh, Dalton Gomez and Christine Fitch would be the lead teachers. We'd send five people, 20 kids, a four to one ratio, supervised sleeping, and we would send the food. <coughs> we would be camping, and there would be supervision at all times. Out of state field trip, joint field trip that came up, um, and we want to take advantage of it. More to talk, more to talk about late next month, next month or sure. Okay. Do we need to approve it so they can plan? We can secure the thing and you can say no, and it's a hundred dollars. We have to figure out how to do it. Yeah, I'd like to plus the front of you talk a little more so you can't talk about stuff. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for letting me slip that in. Okay. Um, be about like 35 students or so. 20 total with the adults. Oh my gosh, it's a small group. Yeah. It's all they can handle. Yeah. Uh, is that all of them? Is that, that, is that a really small ninth grade class? class? No, it's okay. two classes, a biology class and a geology class. Okay. So it would be about that fun. So, so not all the ninth graders should go. 16 total. More for loyal to them. Again, I just want to say I hope we can do more together because I, you know that those kids are going to be like, oh, only eight kids, and, you know. I know it's a great opportunity, but. <coughs> Thank you. All right, um, consent agenda. Hopefully everyone had an opportunity to read the, the uh, consent. Minutes. Minutes. I read what was printed, but that's not what I wanted to do. Everyone is moving. Read the minutes of Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. 
talking about tonight, but I think as we uh, are together, as we get closer to the end of the year, you're going to see more and more of this uh, commingling of both schools and classes and different activities. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the committee work, I happen to sit in on the uh, <coughs> kind of the announcement for the course catalog for the high school the other day uh, when the teachers basically, uh, each department kind of took a, an area that they've been working on and, and tried to kind of announce and talk about the new classes that they developed. And <coughs> I was pretty impressed uh, that they have really worked hard on this. Uh, and we're hoping uh, when the kids see it, they're going to be pretty excited about it. Um, uh, so that's one thing. Um, we have work being done in, on a lot of different fronts. Uh, I think our need and, and our what we want to happen is some of these committees will end when their purpose is completed and not continue to go on and on and on. Uh, but certainly it was a big hurdle to get over to get the uh, class uh, catalog, uh, course catalog completed so that the kids can then start taking a look at it and register. When is that going to take place, the registration next March 30th? March 30th in the morning, all morning in Royal. And that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty normal uh, that time of the year. Uh, and so we think that uh, you know, there'll be a lot of enthusiasm when the kids finally see some of the new courses that have come um, The other committees that are that are going, um, I don't know, uh, every one of them where their progress is, but Joanne, you're on a couple of them. And well, marketing. Marketing. Um, the logo deadline was today, so we had a few come in. That was encouraging, and some online, so we'll meet on the Second and look at them and see what the top three will be that go out to vote for the student body. And uh, that's where we are at. Andrea, any? I know transportation for you, maybe that's a sore subject. For <laughs> we have maps now. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good maps. We, uh, I think that Steve Land and myself are just going to meet. And but the plan is to map out. Uh, all the stops and the ages of kids at stops because he was recommending a two-tier pickup so that I'm not saying one will be first or the other but we'll either pick up all the elementary first and then go back out for all the older kids or vice versa so first we need to see who's where and then look at where the current bus routes overlap to create potentially new bus routes. Does that allow for a bus to pick up older kids and just take them straight to the destination school that they're that's what we're going to see, but we won't know until we map it out. Yeah, because I was like listening to my boys, they're like, well, I guess the bus will take us to Bethel and then we'll wait there and get on another bus and go to Royalty. You know, like I'm listening to that, I'm like, it'll be nice to well, see how it all works. The kids want to get up the latest because they're up all night long. Yeah. <laughs> they can stop here, sweep a little stuff. Yeah, the right, bus, right. And get back to work. So there's a lot more work to do with transportation. Yeah. Owen, what, what do you have? I'll go down through the. The, uh, the next one, there's steering committee, which mm -hmm. you lead. Then there's um, student voice, which I'm the administrative leader on. That is the March 30th work is what we're working on now, the course selection. Policy <coughs> governance, which hasn't been called yet. Yeah, but we have a, we have a proposal uh, to, to move forward on that now. Okay, community, community engagement, which I'm the administrator on. That's the um, Wildcat newsletter you're getting, or the Wildcat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As it went out last week, sorry about that. It went out with a typo and it said, Wow, Kate! So, can we name Kate in town? Calm down. And we're also talking about how we can bring people. Andrew, you're on, you're on there. Why don't you help a little? Uh, we're just uh, yeah, talking about some nights that middle school parents can come and go to this facility and get to meet the new facility faculty. So, uh, and then, same thing for high school. Then there's multi-tiered systems of support. Andrew's the leader with Deb Matthew on that. Yep, and we've been meeting um, and trying to bring us together about how we're gonna deal with proactively with behavior and de defining how we're gonna react to behavior in both places so that when kids 
there are two different elementary schools, but then funnel to the same middle school and funnel to the same high school. It's consistent and predictable. So um, we have a whole huge team of South Rose. The teachers are going to the best conference this summer, which is an annual conference at Killington. And uh, two of our teachers are going to join them just for just for consistency, but um, and then we'll have some summer planning time as well. And the other part of that. Do you have a question? Well, uh, I guess my thing will go back to, I guess we're talking about curriculum, but then also just talking about, sound like sort of some open house nights. Was, yeah. With the curriculum, can we get some summary or information sent out to the other schools in the SU that would be the sending schools for, for students? Uh, so get it up to Chelsea and, uh, and over to Rochester or wherever we, we're going to get, get students from. And then for those open house nights, can we also invite the people from those schools, let them know about those nights? Uh, We've been talking about maybe busing kids in to do some work in the building to go get them. Yeah. Bring them in and get them t-shirts and get them yeah, signed up. Our uh, uh, can, can I add, just because I know quite a lot of people in Chelsea, uh, Thetford is pursuing them. Uh, they have like their students calling their students. And they're telling that inappropriate. Chelsea is Chelsea is telling their students that they should need to make decisions by May one. Okay. For so that's so further that, in the report. Yeah. We do have a counselor committee that I could address all of this if you want, and the curriculum committee. But I think um, if you want to do it now, we have Bruce has charged the counselors at both schools to get on this, get in those buildings, get with those counselors, and get those kids in our buildings and find out what they want to learn and make sure their parents have good information and invite them to everything. So I don't think we need an update. I just think we need to know that you're doing that. I mean, that's how I feel. Well, we got that from the steering committee too. I mean, it's really clear. And yeah. we gave that to uh, Hannah and Nicole very clearly, and they're on it. They're on it. But we will not let up on that because we know that's an important thing. So the best thing- you have the written documentation of all the classes, could you send it to everybody in the, like all the board members and- so that we can share like it with our community members. We're not going to share it with anybody until we share it with the kids. Right. We okay. want them to get it first. And the way we're presenting that is not by who teaches what, by what, what is being taught. So students won't shop for teachers. They'll shop for what they're interested in or what their path to graduation is. Well, we won't be able to hold that back. Very long. Well, and they could probably figure some of it out. But then once the kids are uh, with it, we want to get it to the parents. But we'll get that out too. We'll make that get that out there for you and we can do that through community engagement too. We have been trying to put links on the merger Facebook page and also on um, the individual school pages. So I, I've, I've been very impressed by the, the work that uh, folks have been doing, doing their normal job, their teaching job and also doing this extra work and trying to, to make things happen at the same time. So. Um, and, and the high school group um, was pretty enthusiastic the other day. They were proud of what they have done. Yeah. I want to make sure Frank gets a word in on your own committees. And sure. Um, the facilities committee, we are uh, scheduled to meet. We were actually scheduled to meet last week, but with snow days and stuff like that. Um, and the main purpose right now is we're going to try and come up with a moving schedule, sort of take a look at classrooms. Owen has agreed to, because um, he wasn't originally part, but he's going to come sit in. We'll talk about uh, what's the moving schedule, how many people do we need, how many classrooms, what needs to be changed, books, desks. Uh, we've been doing an inventory on that in both buildings. What can be shared, um, what can be reused, and what do we need to sort of fill in in the gaps. Um, and like I said, last week we're supposed to meet, so. Um, my understanding is we'll either meet late this week um, or early next week. We finished with the gym floor, which I believe you got a report on, um, and that's one of the things, main things that we were working on. The other co-curricular, we um, haven't met in a couple of weeks. One of the things that we're working on is trying to come up with, um, and we're going to start inviting students. We have Lindy, myself, uh, and four or five teachers that are involved, and we want to take a look at um, sort of an overall athletic uh, co-curricular policy um, and that sort of ties in um, with our mission and our statement so sort of things like um, practices before games dress up 
um, what about habits of work versus ineligibility? So right now we have two different um, eligibility policies and one of the things that we're looking at and we've pulled some data from um, 10 surrounding schools from down um, all the way far down as Brattleboro up to Burlington to see um, do we want to stick with what we have as eligibility or do we want to look towards something of proficiencies and habits of work. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, and then sending over our information to the procedure committee um, in regards to some of the things that we would like to see and then have them sort of couple with them of what goes in the um, student handbook. So that's where we are with those two. And then I'm on a couple of the other committees that were already mentioned, so I don't need to rehash that. Okay, so I'll just I'll just hit a couple of these um, real quick. Uh, update on negotiations. We will be working in negotiations this Thursday with a federal mediator and teachers at the office all day long, starting at nine o'clock, probably going till five at least. Uh, I think we had a very productive session with Dina on the telephone last week. I think the board is prepared, and I think we. We are ready for the things that we are that are important to us, um, and I'm sure that the teachers have the same information that what's important to them. But I think uh, we'll see where this goes. I guess there's a, a sense of resolve with, with the board about uh, what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, and, and we'll see how it all plays out. So, uh, Dave, anything? Nope. Do anything? Uh, policies. I gave you two policies. Um, we're, <clears throat> one's a kindergarten policy and preschool policy. They, there's a couple here that they didn't get around. And there's also something with technology, I believe, uh, use of educational technology. Um, I'd like you to look at these as a first draft. And, you don't have to, and maybe bring it back next time for questions. Um, I have to get going with you guys with policies. You know, yeah. And I'm hoping that we can get Steve Dale to work with us on maybe forming a committee and one person from each board uh, meeting. And he thinks it won't take very long if we get, if we'll get the major ones uh, together. Uh, I had to kind of abandon this uh, about a year ago because First of all, people were pretty meaty to out, and we were getting very little attendance. It's all understandable with the amount of meetings that we were doing, but we really, this is the most important thing that boards do, is policy. And you can't, it's hard to make policy when you're in a crisis, when something comes up, or you know, people are uh, one, wanting clarification for you. If you don't have the policy, it's, you're in a pretty bad place. So we're gonna, we need to get these done, and it's pretty mundane work, but uh, it needs to happen. So that's that's what I'm saying with that. And there is a proposal by Steve with Steve Dale. As you know, I put ten thousand dollars away in the SU budget for policy work, uh, and I work with teams on governance and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> Board training, I sent around uh, that black and red, and it's right over in front of Owen here on the table if you didn't see it, uh, of dates coming up at the bottom. Uh, I think if you didn't get these and you're a new board member, you really ought to go to this first uh, one. It's not enough, but it's a good start. Uh, and I hope that um, you, know, you will uh, register. If you want to just call Christy, she'll get you registered. Uh, it's not going to be a problem. We'll, we'll make sure it happens for you because it's important that you get as much training as you can. Um, which one are you talking about? The effective engaged government? You can pick which one you want to go to. Uh, it would be new board training. Is that on there? Somewhere? Yes. Right. The so one in the middle mm -hmm. in the white. Yeah. Well, okay. Strong. Just pick one town or do one. Right. You pick the date that works best for you. Um, and they're all the same content. So we contact Christy, let her know what date we want to do and she'll yeah. register us? Yeah. So it's a really good flyer. You can do more than one. Uh, you can do some of these others that are up. Uh, but uh, I really suggest you, know, you go if you can. Um, 
the IFR report, I'm not going to go through it all. Um, I just wanted you to see it. We got this back uh, from the state. This was the uh, assessment that they did on uh, at the end of January. They sent 26 people into our SU and uh, they people divided up and went out. Uh, I was told that they had they collected uh, 1446 statements uh, with those 26 people uh, about things that they saw when they moved around, going to classes, talking to various people in the buildings. Uh, it's important that you understand that you're not going to see any um, referral to Bethel or Soro. This is an SU evaluation. And we did have Jesse Roy from the state come in and work with the administrators on what it's really saying. Uh, so I, I would like to bring this back. It's in draft form here, but uh, we told him to take the watermarks off because we really don't have any problems with it. It's not, it's one of these things where you can always do better. Uh, you know, you can't do badly. Uh, there's, there's comments in here about we need to work harder on a certain thing, or they praised us on the things, some of the things that we're doing. So that's uh, out to the public now, and uh, it's something uh, we're happy about. Um, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's important that you understand that the future planning that um, was a part of uh, the agreement, uh, future planning apparently is not able to carry out their responsibility that we signed up for, basically, and we will be asking the executive board to vote to go to a different company uh, on Thursday. Uh, we've had some teachers who had to wait to get their money, you know, once they've had the prescriptions and what. Um, um, the, uh, the name of the company's data path that, that we're going to be talking about on Thursday with the executive board and it's quite likely they, they are they were going to be making they were going to be doing part of the uh, process for us anyway and they have the capacity to follow through on and fulfill exactly what our contract needed yeah i think a future planning was inundated with business because everybody in the whole state is you know going to these uh hsas and uh, hras and uh, we I, I don't think they had the people to be able to provide the service that we needed. So uh, we may change from data path in some point at some point later on, but we are in kind of a important place right now, and we need to get service for our folks. So that's what that's all about. Uh, anybody on the executive board, Dave, Geo, anybody, mm -hmm. Eunice, anything to say about any of these things? I have a question. On the future planning, so we're already in three going into four months and these teachers haven't been able to get any money. Is there been Some of them have. They have they Some of them have. Some of them, and I, I guess all I can do is be honest with them on what's happened, basically. And it's happened to everybody. It hasn't just happened to them. So I think as of Thursday, we should have this solved. And, uh, <clears throat> You know, that's that's what I'm doing basically is, is trying to get the agreement in front of them and allow them to pass it so we can get on with it uh, it's nobody's fault it's just the I know fact that hopefully that if there's some hardships that we can look at maybe funding some of <clears throat> um, I'm not aware of anybody who well I mean I've had a couple people contact me because they they want th this fixed uh, when I tell them what we're doing, they seem to be okay with it, at least in the short run. Uh, like I say, uh, we knew we were going to have to be waiting a little bit anyway, and it was going to be fixed in April. But uh, So, you know, we'll consider that, but I don't know of anybody that's... Not being uh, able to get the prescription. Right. Well, I mean, people do contact me. I, they know my email address, so it's like, okay, you know, we can try to be... Okay. Um, discussion items, nature's classroom, I think has been covered. Uh, executive pool board representation. Um, I don't know if that's a, is that an item that we're going to discuss at this meeting? I, uh, 
I wasn't planning on it. Uh, uh, I, I did don't. send around. Uh, I was told to try to get some examples of what boards have done, and I sent that around this afternoon to people in an email to all the board members. And if you've seen it, maybe you haven't seen it, I don't know, but it wasn't until late today. Um, and basically, what they're telling us at the AOE is, whatever you present to the state board has to just be something you all agree that it works. It's kind of a general conversation. Uh, so. Uh, just a question about what you sent around. It looked like the examples that you had basically gave some extra seats to certain districts. Is, is it possible to decrease the number certain districts have to? Uh, I was told by Donna Russo Savage, I saw her today actually, and she so said whatever, whatever, whatever the board can agree to, but it has to be blessed by the state board when you're done. So I think it's going to be a hard conversation because this has been coming up for three or four years about who has the power, who has the, you know, and I, I mean, not enough. Representation. I don't think we should look at it as power. Well, okay, wrong word. Representation. It's just a question. It's been coming up, you know. And it's right now, the only thing they give is either three votes or one vote. Right. One vote if you don't have schools, three votes if you do have a school. And with the merger here between Bethel and Royalton, the issue is you now have three votes where you had six before. Sharon and Stratford have three, and they have the same. And I don't know whether that's right or not. Same but with Cambridge, Chelsea, and Rock. Yeah, just, it's all been condensed. So, so I, I would like to say something about this topic because um, just to give everybody a history, a few years ago when we merged SUs, I advocated that we do have voting done on a proportional system by how many citizens you have in the town. That didn't get very much love at the table, and so we moved on. I didn't push it too hard. I pushed it a little bit. But the one bylaw we did get put in is automatically, if any towns merge, automatically the bylaws are opened back up again. That's in the bylaws. So we, that whether and anybody wants to discuss it or not at the SU level, you have to discuss it because we've merged. And I think it's insane that we would go down to three votes um, as, as an organization. I think it's crazy. We have, you know, 45% of the students in the district and we'll have the same voting power as, as schools with, you know, 150 kids. So I really would advocate for the new board coming in that you push this and it doesn't matter what the state law says. The state law currently says that it's three votes per seat on an SU board. They've got all kind of waivers everywhere across the state waiving that requirement. So um, even if the Stratford and Sharon don't agree, you can still take this to the state board and take the case up there. And I, that's what I would advocate you do. But doesn't it make sense for it to be addressed ahead of time? Because once we are all seated and we go to the new SU model, then we're already at a place where Bethel Royalton combined are three representatives, Sharon's three representatives, Stratford's three. And so at that point, your ability to negotiate and vote is somewhat compromised. I, yeah. I have been advocating that we start this conversation now. And we talked about it last week, and I believe that's going to keep coming up until we come with a resolution between now and hopefully the board July 1. Well, just to let everybody know, Don Shaw is doesn't see a reason right. to do this. He doesn't know. Right. He, he thinks if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Well, so I think those of us who are going is I don't uh, those of us who are going to the uh, full board meeting on Monday okay. need to be very vocal that we want to talk about the bylaws. We want to change them. Can it be put on the agenda for Monday? Uh, I, I don't see why not. The agenda for okay. Monday, isn't it? Did it happen? Because I I went to the last executive board Sorry. meeting and presented a letter requesting that it be put on the agenda and Kathy Galuzzo and Don Hyde and everybody Don who Sean. was Sean. no Bruce Don, Hyde. Don Bruce, Bruce Hyde. Hyde. Bruce Hyde. Thank you. Um, said I thought that there was movement made to put it on the next agenda. Uh, well I've been told by Don that he wants everything to come through again. So I I'm willing to talk to Don well, and tell him reorganize everybody who was there voted. 
but it can't be on the agenda. Because Don says, because, it, you know, you guys reorganize. I'll do whatever you want me to do, but well, understand, I'm, it's, I feel like a ping pong ball. Here. I, I have a, I, I've worked with Don for many years. I'm very happy to give Don a call. Okay. To, but I, I would like your blessing to say that we're, uh, the word I would be using is quite insistent that this be put on the agenda. Yeah. I, I, I would but if, if I don't have your backing, then I, I can't really do much. Do you want to vote? I don't need a vote, just not a heads. That I mean, is everybody okay with me using that word, that word insistent? Yeah. That we talk about this. Because it's. I don't know where Don stands on this, and I don't know where Strafford stands on this. I guess my point is, I don't want to make a fight unless we, before we have, before we need to. And Bruce, I know where Don stands on this because he's told me. And I got an email. Geo, can you? And you won't put it on the agenda. I think it's clear. Yeah. 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 It needs to be uh, or we actually lose so our voting power. Please reach out to him. <coughs> I'm very happy to bring this up. Well, I'll tell him we're going to bring it up whether it's on the agenda or not. We're, right. we're going to do this. I so. No, I think Robert's rules we can add it. Right, right. You so let's just put it on the agenda and make it official. And these yeah. are open to the public, too. They are, yes. So he'll, he'll, put night, he'll, he'll put it on. Monday night. He'll put it on. Monday night is in Stockbridge. Okay. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Alright. Oh, yeah. Six o'clock. We need to have a Okay. Uh, yeah. I, sorry, can I ask one quick question back to Olin? Really quick. I'll make it really quick, I promise. Uh, under the committee work, I'm just curious if food service is under there and what is it a whole committee? committee? Okay, and can, is that is it possible to sit in on some of these committees? I looked on the website and there's absolutely no information on who's on committees or when they meet or or how to even reach out. Like I'm interested in food service okay. and I I want to go to some of the meetings, but it's like I here I am on the school board and I don't even know who to contact. So that committee is made up of. Uh, Linda Wheelock, and Gail, Galen, Bugenard, and myself and Bruce, and then Willie. I think Dorothy's got a good point. I think that should be. Asked I heard two. I heard two things. Public. Public. Yeah. I heard that, two things, and we yeah. can take care of that in community engagement. We need to get that calendar out. We have a merger committee calendar. Yeah. We need to put that in front of people. We'll take care of okay. that. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you brought that. Okay. And on that note, I also want to bring up, I think the White River Valley SU website is the worst website I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. Can, yeah cool. can I get a shout out on that one? Terrible. Terrible. And it's hard to find anything. And especially under the new school, when I've gone to look for information, you click on something. And it's like there's nothing there. It's just hanging in the breeze. So well, we got hacked about a week or two ago. So I don't know whether that makes any difference. But I was told that, that uh, by Mark Klein that we were hacked. Uh, and I'm going to say it again. I would like to see in big letters in all the papers how to get to the right place because I agree with you. I have tried and I've tried that, and my dog was. Yeah, I mean, we just it's, can't get it's it terrible, and it would be nice if there was just some clear, clear way to just go to the <coughs> new school's website. I hate having to go get redirected to the SU website. Oh man, take notes. Thank you. There is a new school website. And could there you there announce it when you really website. do get it fixed? Yeah, yeah you I know, that. but I'm just yeah. saying, like, yeah. isn't that there a little could a, there could be a page on the existing site that's easy to navigate to? And yeah, and then, like, has the information that's easy to access. It's, I'm, I just am saying that that I think is yeah. a real flaw. Okay, thank you. You guys, you want to take care of it? I'll personally reach out to you on the food service piece, thank but you. we'll get it out to the larger group. How about we get an email to all of us here about what you're doing? That'd be great. Thank you. Did it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, next meeting day, Tuesday, April 17, 6 p.m. at Royal. Okay. I have to say my vacation week is for the kids. Right. Okay. We're on the school board. We got a lot of stuff to do. Are there parents here with kids that are?
are going on vacation because all kids are on vacation? That would be the question. So does that mean I'm taking notes? <laughs> so you would need to take notes, notes for your respective meeting and Jeff would need to take notes for his respective meeting. You mean Dorothy? Um, oh, my apologies. Oh, Gio's going to take notes for yeah. I'm nominating for you. Some of the principals organized like medical appointments okay. or out of town stuff on those okay. dates. I know a quick survey here, three of us aren't available. Are not, all three of you. So, I don't know about Frank. Okay, well then. He doesn't know about stuff. I'm getting like my face pulled back. To mm -hmm. Again? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get hair extensions, are you? So should we try to move it to the Tuesday prior? Um, or at 10th of April? We can. I got to look and see. Oh, wait, the 24th. You yeah. want this? I have another calendar that mm -hmm. needs to go on. I recorded the annual meeting. I know, I, I, this is the most fun that I go to. That's why I said you know, I really that. You know that one? Where, where, oh, Owen, where are they going? 